Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the Two Brain Business channel. I'm Jeff Burlingame, professional mentor for Two Brain Business. I'm here to talk to you guys about my five tips to not suck at sales. If this is your first time stopping by the Two Brain Business channel and you like actionable advice that will improve your life, you might want to subscribe. So consider subscribing, smash the like on this video, helps us out a lot, and ring that notification bell so you can see when we post more videos. All right, let's get into these five tips. Tip number one, very important. Probably not the most important thing when it comes to sales because you can't sell to an empty seat. My number one tip is that you call every dang lead at least 10 times. Don't give up on them too soon. Spend some time. You've invested maybe dollars into Facebook marketing, into getting these leads. Maybe you've done the work to you know, run an event and you've gotten leads. No matter how you acquired these leads, you should be investing time into them. Otherwise, you're just wasting money. And I can tell you, there's a better use for a $100 bill than ignoring these leads. Why 10 times? 10 times is enough to get somebody to either a yes or a no and off of maybe, and that's really what we want. So what I'm looking for from you guys here is that you call them, practice what we call a double dial. So call them. If they don't answer, don't leave a voicemail. Don't think for one second they're going to listen to your voicemail for a one, for two, that they're going to listen to it, feel that it's compelling, and call you back. It's just not going to happen. So call them. If they don't answer, hang up, wait five minutes, call them again. That's a double dial. If they don't answer you or return your call from the double dial, give them like an hour or so, send them a text. Keep that text short and sweet. Let them know that you're reaching out from your gym or from your fitness business and that you're very interested in talking to them about their goals. Make it about them. If they don't respond to that, then we're going to wait a day and we're going to repeat the process. If they don't respond to that, again, that's three more contacts right there, so we're at six. If they don't respond that day, you go a third day, three more contacts, you're at nine. And if they don't respond to that, you send one last Hail Mary, which is the final call and the voicemail. This is it. This is the last one. You send the voicemail and then I want you guys to move them to your dead list or your return call list at some point in the near future when you're bored and you just don't know what to do. This is your last ditch effort list. So put them on your email list, make sure they're getting contact from you here and there and that they're staying engaged in some fashion. Tip number two, is actually going to be about your setup, your space, where you're going to conduct your intro. So tip number two is your intro space. What do you do with it? What does it look like? And then maybe what are the most successful gym owners and fitness business owners doing with their space right now? So there's a couple things you can do with your intro space that are going to set you up for success. Number one, obviously make sure it's clean. You don't wanna take a new prospect into a very cluttered space or a dirty space. Make sure it's clean, make sure it's organized, and make sure it's quiet. You now need to spend 15, 30, maybe 45 minutes with this person talking to them about who they are, what their goals are, and more importantly, as we've talked about on the channel before, why those goals matter to them. So if you wanna have a serious one-on-one -on -one conversation that leads to a sale, you should probably make sure that you can hear each other talk. So if there's a class going on in the background and people are clanging and banging with their barbells, you're not gonna have a very good conversation. It's gonna be tough to hear each other over the music and over the loud noises of the weights hitting the ground. So be smart about that. Otherwise, finally, you can help yourself out a bit by having that space clear of distractions like TVs, uh, picture frame, digital picture frames, things like that, other members, walking by and saying, hey, how's it going? Like, this is not helping your sales. So try to make sure you're, you know, removing distractions as much as humanly possible. And you can level things up by maybe having some pictures, posters, or displays, non-moving, non-digital versions, like actual just pictures, okay, uh, that don't change or anything like that. You can get them printed off of Vistaprint if you want to, but pictures of your members, your success stories, your social proof. That's going to go a long way to helping you sell this person. Uh, they're going to see that and say like, oh, it's worked for other people in the past. You could even point to them as references throughout your conversation. I highly recommend it. Tip number three comes down to you your body language. Now, we can dive down a real deep rabbit hole here. We're not gonna do it for the sake of today's video, but in the future, we might. If you guys wanna see something about that or dive more into the psychology of selling, drop me a comment below, let me know. I'd be happy to address that. Now, on the surface, here's the most important stuff. Eye contact, be warm and welcoming, 
Practice active listening, lots of nodding, yeses, repeating or mirroring what Mrs. Jones, aka your prospect, is saying. I hear you, I understand, you know, what you're saying is this, and then repeat the last three words she said. I'll give you two books right now that'll really help out with this. Number one, one of my favorite of all time would be The Psychology of Selling by Brian Tracy. Number two would be Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Go check out those two books and you're gonna get a lot of psychological practices and body language cues and things like that that you can learn and apply right now in your sales process. Other things you're gonna wanna pay attention to would be things like your positioning. How are you seated? Are you across the desk from them? Granted, COVID standards right now, you need to be six feet away. I still don't recommend sitting directly across from them. This kind of puts you into a position where they can't see the notes that you're taking for your active listening. Uh, and therefore it applies some level of secrecy or, or removes some level of trust. Us being in a high trust sales industry, that is a bad idea. I recommend sitting actually kitty corner to them. So essentially this is you, this is them, right? plus six feet distance in between you so you can be safe for COVID standards and such. We're sitting in a position uh, on my writing side, if I'm a right-hander, then I'm sitting on their left so that as I take notes, they can see what I'm writing. This makes a big difference. Other things to pay attention to would be mirroring their posture and their pace or their energy level. You don't want to be high and bubbly when Mrs. Jones is sort of, you know, quiet, timid, and slouching, right? You don't want to be overly puffed out posture if Mrs. Jones is down here. So try to match the position they're in. And you can actually, this is starting to get into the rabbit hole. We're not going to do this. I promised I wouldn't do this for this video, but I'll give you one tip. You can actually mirror them for a few minutes and then change your position, your posture, your voice inflection, your energy level, and they will try to pace up to meet you. This is actually a psychological test I'd like to have you try out on your friends and family members first before you apply it at a sales process, but it does work. So if Mrs. Jones is slouched and timid and quiet, I'm gonna start out that way too. Mrs. Jones, tell me a little bit about your goals. What brought you in to see us today? And then as we continue the conversation, I'm going to slowly move my posture up, increase my voice inflection, maybe the pace of the conversation, and maybe my energy comes out a little bit more now. As you do that, you're gonna find Mrs. Jones to do the same thing. It's a lot of fun. It's a good party trick. You guys can apply it to the next party you go to, but it does work in the sales process. Just practice it first before you get into that. So there's some basics for body language. Tip number four, we've actually addressed in a previous video. So go back on the channel, Two Brain Business, YouTube channel, check it out. But we talk about getting to that's right or what we call permission selling. So in this case, once we've wrapped up that discovery phase with Mrs. Jones, we know who she is, what she wants, why she wants it, most importantly of all, then we can actually get to that's right. All we need to do here is recap the information that Mrs. Jones has given us. We just start with Mrs. Jones, you came in here today because you said you wanted to lose weight. We found out through our conversation though today that you said you wanted to lose weight for X, Y, and Z reasons, and that we have a program here that will help you do that. So once we finish that recap, we can pause for dramatic effect, and within five to 10 seconds, she should respond with that's right. If she does not, before 10 seconds, you need to respond with, is that right? Do I have that right? Am I on the same page, right? We just wanna make sure that we are on the same page and she will tell us yes or say that's right, that's great. Now we get our permission, we're gonna proceed with, would you be opposed to me showing you some of our options? Or how would you like to proceed with us today? Or how would you like to get started today? Any of those three are great, you pick the one that you like the most, and then we get our permission from Mrs. Jones. Tip number five, this is especially true for anybody struggling in sales or anybody getting started in sales, or if you're hiring somebody to do sales and they're fairly new to the gig, you're going to want to option close. Option closing, hands down, will increase your average revenue per sale. It will also make it easier to close every single sale. And it can save you from handling a lot of extra objections that are completely unnecessary. Think of it this way. You basically have two options when it comes to closing. You can close with a yes, no question, or you can close with an open-ended question. Yes, no would sound something like this. Mrs. Jones, I think that you should start with us for three times a week personal training with nutrition. How does that sound? How would you like to get started with that today? Does that sound good to you, right? Does that work for you? Blah, blah, blah. 
How would you like to pay today is like the most aggressive way you could do it. It's a method of closing that you're gonna need a ton of confidence and a ton of experience to pull off successfully. What I recommend instead, because it's universally applicable, would be to option close. And for that, you simply need two to four options, no less and no more than that many options. This is why we use a pricing binder, something we will address in a future video on the channel. But option closing is simple. You basically have those two to four options on the page. You say, Mrs. Jones, this is what I recommend for you. You circle the best option for her. But then you have two or three other options on the page that are also there. So you just list them off, you run through them, but you highlight or you focus on the one you want her to get, the one that is, you believe, the most value for her. And then once you've done that, all you have to do to close is say, which of these options works best for you? Get away from the one option close, go for the two to four option close. Uh, again, no more than four because then you get paralysis by analysis where Mrs. Jones now literally has to go home and think about this because you've just given her too many options. So keep that in mind, but there's a great place to start.